This is Ghana. Ghana is currently learning the hard way why oil can be a blessing and a cause if not properly managed. Um, when they go for loans, 9% of the money goes to his own private bank business, which is very wrong. So we just want them to step down. It is not a matter of fight or maybe we just want to be on the streets ranting for nothing. Our economy is in a ditch. You cannot buy a gallon of petrol. A bag of maize cannot be bought. So three square meals now is a problem. Survival is for the fittest. The discovery of crude oil and the exploration helped turn this West African nation into one of the continent's top investment destinations. These made different successive governments' regimes to borrow a lot of money, therefore making many foreign investors to offload Ghana's bonds and currency. The city, due to mounting concern over its ability to settle its debts, the tumbling exchange rate and the drop of the Ghana city even made it worse. Ghana's president, President Nana Akufado's administration, has appealed to the International Monetary Fund for an assistance package of as much as 3 billion US dollars to battle the crippling economy. Even though Ghana is the first sub Saharan African nation to gain independence after colonial rule, regardless of that, the government has been battling to keep the country at rest. Okay, here is a little run back of Ghana's little economic struggles. By the late 1900s, the success of Ghana's cocoa crops brought over from the America in 1978 seemed to be securing the country's status as a fast-growing economy to watch out for, but it didn't take long before the drop in the price of cocoa bean, causing a halt to this slowly booming economy. Although Ghana was also a big exporter of gold and had lots of natural resources, the country's heavy reliance on cocoa exports saw the dip in Ghana's economy taking a toll on all aspects of life for Ghanaians. Later in 1957, Ghana gained independence and the government set its focus on economy from the start. By the mid-1990s, Ghana was once again experiencing rapid economic growth thanks to good governance put forward in policies and plans to improve the quality of life for Ghanaians. These gains were boosted in 2007 with the discovery of oil and Ghana's economy started gaining weight of its own again. As the world's second biggest producer of cocoa and Africa's number two producer of gold, he began exporting oil in 2010. The following year, gross domestic products leaped by almost 14%. Between 2018 and 2019, Ghana was referred to as the world's fastest growing economy. That was by far the most sunny year for Ghana's economy as a lot of investors trooped into Ghana for investments and that gave Ghana's economy the biggest push in the country's history. This alone made Ghana the fastest growing economy in Africa. But then in 2022, everything started crumbling. About 87% of Ghanaians think the country is going the wrong direction. The economy is a big reason. But then, one might be wondering, what really happened after all these success stories? Why is Ghana's economy crumbling? Here is why. The government abandoned fiscal discipline and opened the spending tabs in anticipation of an oil windfall, but the revenue it earned was insufficient to cover a succession of expensive flagship programs and projects currently running in the country. The impact of the huge public debt and the slowed growth of revenue is that the country has to borrow to finance its spending every time. Until the government borrows, it can do virtually nothing. This has slowed down the government's ability to implement its programs and policies to grow and transform the economy. Over a 16-year period, between 2006 to 2021, the country's economic growth was largely driven by the extractive sector. This sector is capital intensive because it uses more machines than human beings. The effect is that even though there are some economic growth, the source of growth is not from sectors of the economy that can generate employment. 
This is why unemployment has increased from 5% to 13% between these years. After selling euro bonds for each of the previous 9 years, Ghana was shut out of international capital markets in 2022 as investors lost faith in its ability to service or repay its loans. The government shunned an initiative that would have enabled it to suspend interest payments and vowed not to seek further support from the IMF. But then, in September, they went to IMF again. The city's decline of more than 55% in the first 10 months of 2022 made it the world's worst performing currency. To battle this crisis, the president Akufado first denied the speculation that the IMF is funding a deal which could translate into losses for Ghana. He also pledged to restore financial discipline by reducing total public debt to 55% of gross domestic product by 2028 and peg external debt service costs to no more than 18% of annual revenue by that year. The Bank of Ghana, on the other hand, has raised its lending rate by 10% in the first 10 months of 2022 to support the currency and help tame the inflation. The central bank also increased cash reserves that banks are required to hold, and they also began buying dollars from mining and oil companies operating in the country. These moves were aimed at bolstering depleting foreign reserves in the country. Ghana is currently in a difficult position. The only way out is to raise enough revenue to finance its development. Even if the government succeeded in borrowing it, it will still have to raise enough revenue domestically to serve the debt. Therefore, there is no substitute for domestic resource mobilization. The government will have to raise revenue through taxes without overburdening taxpayers and non-taxpayer sources. But even if Ghana's odd model has its benefits, many Ghanaians are tiring of the circle of pork barrel politicians followed by the IMF intervention and almost half of Ghanaians are dissatisfied with the way democracy works in Ghana. So there you have it. Thanks for watching today's Africa. Please do make sure you subscribe and click the notification button so you don't miss any of our latest video. And please like and share this video as well. Don't forget to let us know what you think about this inflation in Ghana in the comment section below.